the things in our life that we really value. And the things that we value are things that we spend time doing. Okay, so mm. well, we might think, like I would say, well, gosh, uh, I value going to the gym. Well, maybe, I don't know, I bought the three-year Costco thing and never went to the gym once. Do I really, is it, you know, it was a nice donation I made to 24-hour fitness. Now, if you ask me, if I say, you say, hey, John, what's what's the biggest value in your life? Or where does the gym compare to Facebook? Oh, I hate Facebook. It's, but I spent more time on Facebook than I did at the gym, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> so how you spend your time, because that's going to tell mm -hmm. you what your value is in your marriage, you know? So if you're not spending time together. Hello, and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationship from, from surviving, surviving to, to thriving. thriving. Today on TMC, we have John and Donna Bigler with Avoiding Divorce. John and Donna Bigler, we've been married 28 years this June. It's a second marriage for both of us. We have three children, ages between 32 and 26, and one beautiful one-year-old granddaughter that we just absolutely adore. Awesome. So John and Donna, tell us a little bit about how you met. How did you meet each other? We worked together. Actually, back then I was running a uh, nonprofit organization. I was their executive officer, and uh, Donna was kind of my assistant. And we tell the story in, in retro by um, when we talk about expectations during marriage said, well, you know, when we work together, I would tell her, you know, hey, do X, Y, or Z. And she would say, yes, sir. And then when we were married. I did the same thing and I didn't get the same results. I was, <laughs> I was disappointed. We, you know, we do go into marriage with not necessarily uh, realistic expectations. <laughs> and, uh, I certainly had my I love it. really unreasonable and <laughs> uh, unrealistic expectations. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> That's funny. So you guys have been married for 28 years, you said? Yeah. Yes, we So let's talk about maybe some of the challenges you think that couples face in marriage. And even if you would like to share a challenge that you faced and how you navigated through it. Many challenges, obviously, from parenting challenges to, you know, different parenting styles to financial, just different ways of handling our finances even, and the different thought processes and everything. And then really, in my opinion, and what we've seen through our experiences, most problems all come down to communication issues. Communication mm -hmm. is number one. If you can communicate, and even if you argue, get through it and figure out a compromise or figure out a way to go, you're better off. So, you know, no matter what the issue, it kind of comes down to communication. We'll talk a little bit about Retrovi, which is the organization that we're the deputy coordinators of. Retrovi is a, a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to trying to help couples specifically that have some trouble in their marriage. That's how Donna and I, you know, found them. So we'd been married about 14 years by the time that we went to Retrovi. We were kind of not very good shape, if we're honest. Family law attorney, so you know, I do divorces for a living. I generally don't think it's a good idea to to uh, sample my own product, but I was I was really <laughs> starting to, uh, to, to think about it seriously, and that's what that's what led us to Retrovi. And uh, when we went to Retrovi, our biggest challenge was we could not communicate very well. Mm -hmm. We see things very differently, like kind of like what Don alluded to. It was a third party sued me for a million and a half dollars, you know, and so I'm I'm in uh -huh. court doing a a case or whatever, and I get served with this paperwork, you know. And honestly, I didn't tell Don about it. You know, because I didn't know what, not because she was going to get mad. I didn't want to bother her with it. I was, mm -hmm. you know, I just, that felt like, well, that was my load to carry. Um, you know, and now I would, I would tell her about it, you know, because not because I want to worry her, but I know that she would, I just wouldn't want to keep it from her. I wouldn't want mm -hmm. to have that, you know, between us, you know, fortunately, I mean, it got resolved in like 30 days in my favor. Um, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it was a little scary for, a while. I was, I mean, I was legitimately, Scared, you know, uh, at, at first when I when I got that and I did not tell her about it. Wow. You all have just shared a huge nugget right now because, you know, sometimes not telling your spouse something because you're thinking one way, like, I don't want to worry them. I don't want them to be upset, you know, all of this. So you have one frame of mind and uh, Donna, you said it too, and they have another one. And just the fact of not communicating that it can set up a whole catastrophe or a litany of problems to come along with it because I didn't tell you because I didn't want to worry you. And now you think 
think I'm keeping secrets from you. And I think that a lot of times in relationships, we don't think about that. We're seeing things from two different perspectives. And if we just share our perspective and talk about it, then it helps us to see things differently. Because I think you do have some couples that are fighting or on their way to divorce court. And it's just because they see things differently. Mm. Yeah. Right. That's from our experience and what we've seen um, just working yeah. even in the retrovi organization for the last 14 years. That's most of it. I mean, even down to in infidelity issues generally started with someone not feeling listened to and understood. Mm -hmm. and you know, even that will boil down most of the time to communication. There's there's situations where it's just you've got someone who's going to cheat regardless. I'd say probably 70, 80 percent of the time. It's just it started with miscommunication. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, John, you said you specialize in divorce, right? So we're on here to prevent divorce. So right. what is some if you could think of a piece of advice or something that you all would tell someone who is desiring to be married or thinking about marriage before they get married? What is something that you would share with them? And unfortunately, there's not a lot of people doing what you guys are doing, what we're doing with Retrovi. There's just not a lot of resources. And so I think, you know, I would say, you know, hey, find, find some resources that are going to help you communicate in areas that you maybe don't want to necessarily talk about. Because I think one of the things that happens, probably not as ridiculous as the example I gave where Donna worked as my secretary and I had these unrealistic expectations, <laughs> but people do have have unrealistic expectations, you know, and I do see that in, in the law office, you know, or sometimes you'll see people that come in, the person could be my age, you know, and they're, they got their dad with them, you know, and I'm thinking, mm. okay, well, here's somebody that never left their household, you know, their, mm. their family of origin, you know, that's something that could, mm. could if, maybe if that had been addressed, you know, early on, mm -hmm. then they wouldn't be in that, that position, because that parent is clearly not really helping them, even though they think they're helping them, you know, and there you can tell like, oh, well, they're just really happy that this person is finally now going to, you know, get rid of the bum or the, <laughs> right, you know, and so I think those kinds of things, there's a part of Retrovi or, or a sister organization is called Engagement Encounter. They, what they do is they teach engaged couples to communicate and they kind of, you have to be pushed, I think, to want to communicate outside the comfortable areas that make you feel good. Yeah. So, if you can be pushed into talking about things that are uncomfortable before you're married, I think that's something that could really help you. Yeah. And I, I've told people this, it's like, you know, going into marriage, it's like everything you're happy, you think it's going to be happily ever after. And I just kind of, you know, be prepared. Some years might feel like 10 years. You mm. might hit, you're going to hit a bad spell. But if you hang, hang in through the bad spell, it will get better again. But you just got to be prepared to not walk away the first time you think that, uh, you know, the first time you have a bad week. Mm -hmm. it's not over mm -hmm. you know and the other yeah. one is the feeling of really being you know the giddy in love is gonna fade it's love becomes a commitment and a decision rather than just a feeling and you've got uh, to hang on to that commitment when you lose the feeling because the feeling will come back but feelings come and go mm -hmm. wow yes donna <laughs> you have just said a mouthful because that is so oh, true man. feelings come and go and i i love what you said that after the feelings are gone, love becomes a commitment. It becomes a commitment. It's more mm -hmm. than just how you make me feel or how I feel when I see you. It has to go beyond that in order for it to last and for you to understand what it's really about. Mm -hmm. So in 28 years, what lessons? Oh boy, a lot. <laughs> um, you know, probably the biggest, biggest one is, you know, like, like John said, 14 years ago, he was really ready to throw in the towel and I was hanging by a thread. And it's just like, sometimes one of you's got to just hang on to that thread and mm -hmm. figure out a way around it to get out of it. And, you know, at different times, we are both probably have hung on to that thread while the other one was ready to give up. And that's, you know, when one person's really struggling, the other has to step up. For me, like one of the, probably the biggest life lesson is like just for personal is like I've realized I'm not perfect so lawyers think they're perfect and uh you know I knew that I wasn't perfect but in the back of my mind I definitely thought that you know I had it more together than than I really do and I think when I started to really acknowledge a I'm not perfect b I don't have to be perfect 
and see I'm okay with not being perfect, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's because that really impacted the way that I interacted with Don, I think, because a lot of, I, you know, I started out when we got in a bad way 14 years ago. I mean, my view was, well, this is all her fault. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. this is not, you know, this is it's her fault. So, <laughs> you know, we go on this, on a retrovite weekend and I'm like, yeah, well, okay, let's see if, you know, what's, what's she going to learn on the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> but I, but, but I, I came to learn that, wow, you know, I, I definitely carried my weight on the problems that we had uh, and that I wasn't perfect, you know? And so being able to accept that and receive that, that I'm, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm okay with the fact that I'm not perfect and it's okay to admit my faults to her. Mm. So you all started on a retro by weekend for yourself can you tell us a little bit about what that experience was like for you going through it as a couple? What was it like as a couple? John, tell us a little bit, share a little bit more. Well, so in retrovise, it's hundred percent volunteers. So, so like, we don't, we don't get a salary for, for anything. No one does in, in throughout. And so retrovise, a, a, it's an international ministry. It's in close to 30 countries. Um, and there's probably about 130 communities in total throughout the world that provide the retrovi experience, which essentially is a weekend from Friday to Sunday and six follow-up sessions that deals with different things, different problems that people can experience. And so, so I went into the retrovi weekend very negative, like a lot of other people do. On a Friday night, you can look around the room and you, have, you see a lot of couples that don't like each other. Okay. They're, they don't sit next to each other. They don't like each other. Um, and, and so usually by Sunday, so if we're on a typical weekend from, let's say, you know, by so they, that's how they are on Friday by Sunday, it'll almost be unanimous that they're going to, they found some hope and they're willing to, to try again. And these are people, these are not, we're not talking about people that leave the cap off the toothpaste. That's their big issue. We're talking about like these people have already filed for divorce. A lot of them, they're already separated. They have major problems. You know, in fact, when we went on our weekend, I was like, wow, I guess our problems aren't so bad. Um, <laughs> and so um, you don't have to share your problems yeah, at all. It's led right. by three couples and either a minister or a priest is up there with the, is the team just as a spiritual direction. Um, no doctrines discussed, but they kind of share their problems and their issues and how they got through them. Right. And then and the, the couples that are attending don't have to say anything. Mm, so it's wow. you know, you have them to stand up and tell anything about their, their problems, their issues. It's just, we, you know, don't ask, don't tell all It's like, we don't, that's not what it's about. It's about, you know, getting you there and, you know, telling you how we learn to get back at, you know, into a good place with the love and the trust and the respect and everything in communicating in our marriage and then guiding them through the process of starting to develop a better communication pattern yeah by saturday by sunday night everything you know you see people turning around and and you know it literally is just i mean we've had you know friends go on the weekend that were had been divorced for two years i think it's been 10 years since they did their weekend and they're still they remarried and they're doing great 10 years later that's awesome (laughs) <laughs> it's a you know it's an amazing program yeah we've i guess we've probably done about 30 weekends you know around presenting yeah present so basically weekend is three couples just kind of share their story and um and then there's a priest or a pastor couple so we've done about 30 weekends um all, all around the united states actually not just locally because we'll we'll sometimes fly to wherever they need us to do our the talks that we do you know yeah, no, well, because, you know, the, the presenting couples, I mean, they, they go deep with their stories. I mean, you'll see the men and women break down crying over the stories and how much hurt there was in their marriage. And, you know, one of the taglines we used to use um, for retrovive was help for hurting marriages. Mm-hmm. And so everyone in there is hurting. So when you hear someone else say we were hurting and then we rebuild it up and and this is where we are now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you the last 14 years of our marriage is far better than the first 14 years ever were. <laughs> it's like, and I really, I think, you know, it, yeah, it's, it is partly the couples like us that present on the weekends, but honestly, it's, it's the couples themselves that are on the weekend because they, when they learn that they can communicate with each other and really tie into a, to a deep level of communication, it changes everything because they, they've pretty much on Friday, 
they didn't believe that was possible anymore. Mm-hmm. On Sunday, yeah. it is it is possible. So it's it's really a combination of of the two. I think it's it's the yeah it's the couple stories, mm-hmm. but it's it's them taking in that story and go wow if they could do it you know maybe I could do it too. Yeah, that and a lot of times you, you know I've had people say you know I feel like he understood me for the first time. I think mm-hmm. like he really got it mm-hmm. when you know when I was talking to him. So it's like you know so feeling understood is so important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Pretty much. We just let them come in and sit down and, you know, ask them to relax. And, you know, and, and a lot of times they're, they're sitting with their backs to each other. I mean, we make them sit next to each other, but they're not necessarily engaged. <laughs> yes. They're either leaning away or leaning, you know, oh, man. Doing them. <laughs> yeah, it's like body language is a big thing. Yeah. And as presenters at the front of the room, you just kind of look at them and smile and kind of say, you know, Hey, we were there. Mm-hmm. We sat in these chairs. We understand it's hard. And this is, you know, we, we know everyone's hurting and we're going to figure it out together. Got like a 75, 80% save rate on marriages headed for divorce. It's not like on just a regular marriage. Oh, wow. That's awesome. If, in the, if you complete the programming and, you know, follow through what's taken 10 years or 20 years or sometimes 40 years or you know, one case we had a couple on the weekend, they've been married six weeks. It doesn't matter how long or how short you've been married, but if you, you know, complete the program and, you know, you follow through with doing the three day weekend and the six follow up sessions, you can have a completely different life. So, yeah. so what you just said, Donna, was if you're willing to do the work, then you can get the results. Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. There, there's no, you know, Kind of like weight loss or anything else. There's no magic pill. You sometimes I'm not willing to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say, so for example, that there's a couple right now that's listening and they are on the verge of getting divorced. Maybe they have already filed for divorce. What would you say to that couple right now? What do you have to lose? Mm. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Retro by the website is uh, help. It's pretty easy to remember. It's helpourmarriage.org. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they can go there and they can find you know probably a weekend that they could go to, um, and you know really don't like a lot, a lot of times people will call and they'll well what can we do right now I'm like don't do anything okay you, because you're not you're not interacting well so just you know get on the weekend let us teach you so that you're not hurting each other anymore you know then you can yeah. interact. Yeah, it's one of those things. Okay, you know, Retrovive program works the same way just about anywhere you go. Um, there's some communities do a little, there's a small registration fee you pay, but you come in the first night and then you have all day Saturday, Sunday, we give you your meals, we give you your hotel room, everything else for your registration fee. And at the end of the weekend, they tell you what the total cost of the weekend is. And it varies where you are in, in the, obviously New York City, Los Angeles, San Francisco are more ex- expensive than Oklahoma City would be. Uh, tell you what the total cost of your weekend is on Sunday afternoon and just give you a blank envelope and say, give what you'd like. Uh, wow, 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 wow. So it's it's really almost based on a pay it forward type thing so that no one yeah. looks at and says, you know, if, if we walked in on Friday night or, you know, when you're like ready for a divorce and you say, well, it's going to be $1,000 or $800, it's like, oh, forget that. Okay, if it's a two to $400 registration fee, it's a little easier to do that. And then at the end of the weekend, haven't been very many weekends we've been on. Like John said, we've done over 30 where we didn't at least break even. And usually, but what the way it works is the prior weekend pays for the next weekend. So we, we know going in that we always have the money to pay for the next one. Even if someone can't give anything, you know, we travel the country for it and they pay our airfare to go, but that's, you know, that's it. It's like, we don't get a salary for it. It's just... And we make friends all over the country. So, you know. Right. And I, I love, Donna, I love this because you all are talking about you're traveling all around the country and your goal is to let other married couples know we did it. You can do it. Yeah. We just, we're just doing the work. You know, you said stick to the program. If you stick to the program, you can turn it around. And I, I'm sitting here and I'm like blown away because you're talking about you, you receive an envelope and it's like, 
pay what you can. So we're also making sure that the next person can come in. And this truly is an organization that's set up to save marriages. And that is awesome. That's amazing. And I think it's great because I also, I mean, I don't know about divorce, but John, it's a divorce lawyer. I'm sure <laughs> divorce may cost some people a whole lot more than yeah. that one weekend can cost them. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, at one time there was a, I had somebody who I was talking to his wife. I knew the couple because I told them to go to retrovive. They kind of tried to reconcile, but then they didn't, they just didn't follow through with it. And so she, she had come in, was talking to me and I guess he, he knew about it. So he called my receptionist and said, Hey, you know, I know my wife's in there. I'm coming over there right now. Kind of a thing. So oh wow. you know, I, had, I had talked to him before too. So I knew he wasn't like going to be doing anything crazy. So <laughs> So he comes, you know, I, so the reception said, like, what are we going to do? Should we call the cops? I'm like, no, let him in. He's not going to do anything. I'll talk to him. Yeah. So, I, so we let him in, you know? And so he, he comes into the office and his wife's sitting there and he takes thir- a check made out for $3,500. He goes, wham, he slams it down on my desk. And he says, I want a divorce, you know? And I said, well, she's the client. So <laughs> I can't really tell you that. But, uh, <laughs> And I thought, I thought to myself, well, that's cute. You know, he thinks that you can do a divorce for $3,500, but <laughs> I ended up telling him they need to go to Retro. I gave him his check back, you know, and they did go to Retro. Right. And they did, uh, they're still married. They're happily married. She works at the courthouse. So I see her every so often. You know? yes. See, so, I love this. A divorce attorney sending people to the marriage retreat. I love it. I love it. Yeah, we've had, yeah, we've had couples show up on a weekend. We're in the Los Angeles County. We've had uh, we had a couple show up to a weekend in San Diego, and the fr- our friends in San Diego are calling. It's like, oh, by the way, and you know, there's no name shared, but he's like, there was a couple on this weekend, and you know. Saturday night when you know, there was a, there's just an opportunity if you want to share, you know, what's the most significant thing. The guy stands up and says, well, I went and saw a divorce attorney and he recommended this program. And they're, yeah, it's, it, you know. Yeah, that was funny because he, he came in and it was almost like his wife was just trying to get the guy's attention. So the more I talked to him, I realized that, you know, she doesn't want a divorce. And I told him that I said, you know, your wife doesn't want a divorce. And he's like, what are you talking about? She's the one who told me to come here. I'm telling you, she doesn't, she doesn't want a divorce. So I gave him a retrograde brochure. I said, I want you to take this home. I want you to tell her that you want her to go on a weekend with, with her. He called me back about three days later. He goes, you're never going to guess what happened. I said, who are you? know, they're going on a weekend, you know? I don't know. We, we say crazy things when we're hurt and upset. And If someone right now that's listening is considering retrovi, what can they expect? Not a retreat. This isn't, it's not, I say it's more like boot camp than a relaxing mm. weekend. Okay. Um, we, you, they're, you're not going to be out going shopping. You're not going to be sitting by the pool or in the jacuzzi. It's a working weekend. It is a working weekend. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, you're going to, you're going to find out things about yourself and your spouse that you never even realized were there. Yeah. And then after, you know, the weekend, you, there's these six follow-up sessions that you go through, you know, things like forgiveness and family of origin, you know, typical things yeah. that could cause rebuilding a, trust, yeah, yeah. Um, typical things that, that a couple might stumble over. And, um, and, and they, the, some of those things are talked about on the weekend, but not you know, they just don't have the kind of time. So that's what the post sessions are dedicated to is to trying to explore some of these other issues in a little bit more depth. And then when you're done, we have like a monthly meeting um, called continuing our retro experience. And so all these communities have this. And so, you know, it'll be, it's basically just like a fellowship type thing. It'll be, there'll be a little bit of a teaching about about marriage. Uh, Don and I were for six years, we were the coordinators of that core meeting in our community. And so we put together a talk, you know, um, numerous times to present <laughs> on to, whatever topic. To, yeah, whatever that we, you know, sort of thought thought about, and uh, it was really fun, you know, to lead it and to kind of be responsible for a large group of married couples that that are coming there to build their relationship. Yeah. And uh, and so that's what that's really what the program is. It's yeah. almost like a, I guess I would say it's kind of it's not like the AA model, but it's sort of similar. It's a peer based ministry that that helps you get back on track and then there's a community there for you when you do get back on track that has the same values as you do that value you know values marriage that you can you know you can be honest about where you're at and they're you're not going to get judged for that and that's yeah. that's really mm-hmm. a group of friends that you can walk in and just say i hate him right now 
And they're going to go, yep, been there. Okay, let's, what can we do to get you through it? You oh, know, or, you know, and, or I had one, I called one time, I called a friend and, you know, early on at, right after our retro weekend, I called someone and he and I were in a big fight and I called her up and I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't take it. He did A, B, C, D, you know, all the way up to Z. And yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> and Jenna. Passion, and then she looked at me and she says, and what did you do, Donna? <laughs> and I was like instantly, uh. <laughs> so we'll hold you accountable. You know, people come in and just go, we, we, you know, we're doing the, one of the monthly meetings and it's all, vol the monthly meetings are voluntary. You don't have to show up every month. You can show up once a year. You can show up five years later. It's like, you're always welcome. It's not a big deal. Oh. And you're well, if you move, you can just go to another place and find a community and show up and there's no costs, no fees, no nothing. That one envelope on Sunday night of your weekend is the one time you pay. Other than that, we never ask for any more money unless there's a special event coming up maybe. Wow. Um, but it's it's just, you know, you can walk in the door and just be around like-minded people who are there to work on their marriage, even if they're still struggling in areas. Amazing. 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 Absolutely. If someone wanted to connect with you or with RetroVi, where should they go? The RetroVi website is www.helpourmarriage.org. Mm -hmm. um, the website also has uh, a, a contact form that you can fill out if you want more information than what's on there on the website. Those all come to Donna and I right now yeah. as we answer uh, all the information those, requests, all those, yeah, all those inquiries that come awesome. through. It's about 160 a month that come through there. Um, and so, so if they wanted to get to us, they could they could just fill out a a contact form and uh it would it would get to us but um yeah that's how that we, we could be reached sure i would really say you know one patience mm -hmm. and and looking at your spouse and saying okay you know i have to remind myself sometimes when i'm getting frustrated with john that john is not a reflection of me he is mm -hmm. not me he thinks differently he he processes things differently he does the same you know i process differently than he does the perspective is different and having different perspectives is a good thing if you can address it. And when you get, you know, part of um, one of the things we've learned is, you know, when, when we do fight or when we do argue, it's not about, it's not a win-lose situation. If I win and he loses, neither one of us really won. Learning each other and making it a win-win and coming and seeing how the other one works and thinks rather than trying to win the argument. Well, there's an exercise that we do in, in retrovive and the concept is, I won't get into the exercise, but the concept of it is like I've taken an assessment and Donna's taken an assessment of the things that in our life that we really value. And the things that we value are things that we spend time doing. Okay. So mm -hmm. what we might think, like I would say, well, gosh, uh, I value going to the gym. Well, maybe, I don't know. I bought the three-year Costco thing and never went to the gym once. Do I really, is it, you know, it was a nice donation. I made to 24 hour fitness. Now, if you ask me, if I say, you say, Hey John, what's, what, what's the big, what's the biggest value in your life? Or where does the gym compare to Facebook? Oh, I hate Facebook. It's, I, you know, I, but but I spent more time on Facebook than I did at the gym. Guaranteed. <laughs> so, so, taking that assessment yeah. of how you spend your time, because yeah. that's going to tell mm -hmm. you what your value is in your marriage. You know, so if you don't, if you're not spending time together and you say, well, my spouse is the most important person in my life, that might not be true because you got to put your money and your time where your mouth is. You know? mm. And so that was a very eye-opening exercise for <laughs> us. And I think that's, uh, we did a talk recently at a, at a church uh, and that was one of the things that we brought up was for them to do that um, because we think we thought at least for us that was very very helpful and helped you hold yourself accountable on what do you value what what do i think is a value is spending time is with my family a value is eating meals together a value is you know internet usage a value it is playing games on my phone at that you know a value and it, most people would say no playing games on my phone isn't a value eating dinners with my family is is more of a value but then we ask them okay how much time do you spend doing that i'm on the, playing games on your phone than you do eating dinner with your family easy to just write down what do we think the values are you guys continue to do what you are doing <laughs> for couples all around the world and helping hurting marriages we that's that's just awesome thank you all yeah. so much thank Thank you for having us. We really yeah. have enjoyed this and keep doing what you're doing yeah. too, because reaching them through, reaching out through podcasts is really 
helpful and it's one of those you know elements that is needed so that they can hear recommendations on safe and helping their marriage mm -hmm. even if you've got a good marriage you can always improve yes absolutely yes, yes. john donna on behalf of the TMC community, we want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. all right. thank, thank you guys you. for having us. We really enjoyed it. It's nice talking to you. Thank you. Awesome. So we hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you will not miss an episode. And if you're listening on iTunes, rate the podcast and leave a review. That helps us get the word out. And we want to invite you to head on over to our leadership podcast, Lead to Greatness, where my husband is interviewing entrepreneurs and great leaders from all around the world every week. So we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. Looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationship from, from surviving, surviving to thriving. thriving. Bye. Bye. See, See you next week. week.